Keep calm. It's your favorite DJ, DJ One Love. Ladies and gentlemen, right now, it's the Real Life with One Love Talk Show. The show that deals with real life and also have fun while we're doing it. Tune in every Wednesday at 530, come past 17. And make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram for all other things that will be going on with Real Life with One Love. Get ready to enjoy the show. And thank you for watching Real Life with One Love. All right, good evening, guys. We're going to get ready to get into our show. This is Real Life with One Love. And again, this is a continuation of our show on last week. And we're going to get ready to bring back our wonderful guest for our natural soul. This is uh, our friend, our sister, and somebody who's very encouraging. Let's bring in Miss Stephanie Nesbitt. <laughs> Stephanie, what's up? What's up? Uh, one of my kids is at the door <laughs> right now. So it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is gonna get right into it. We're gonna play this highlight of the uh, of this last show, and hopefully we can get it, get it done. And uh, hey, if the kids come in, they're just gonna be a part of the show. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the highlight from last week. Thank you. In information technology and education, thought I was gonna teach. Didn't go that route, actually went the IT route. I had a journey, um, and within that journey, my personal journey was also in parallel lines, right? Being a woman, when I was a teenager, I was dealing with a lot of um, women issues, as we would call it, a lot of menstrual pain, not necessarily just our family, but women in general. Mm. And so as I'm um, matriculated through college and I'm progressing, just not listening to me, you know, and I didn't know any better. I wasn't doing any research. So every um, hormone, um, you know, birth control, if it was an injection, if it was this or if it was that, none of it was working and black woman. And so that's why I'm an advocate for women's wellness, especially black voices, black women, because. That was the highlights right there, and we're going to get right into the show because we got to get back to another job that is very important to all of these beautiful women, and that's called mothering right there. I think I just made that word up, but it would be all right. And uh, <laughs> we want to get right into the show again. We want to thank, uh, thank you for having us back uh, with you, Stephanie, Her Natural Soul. And uh, again, uh, we had got right into the show last weekend. I knew it was going to be a continuation because it was so much information that went into uh, what you was talking about your whole testimony and the things that you've been through and so we just want to pick it back up and pick that back up and i have a couple of questions and uh hopefully everybody enjoy this show um and what i want to do here soon i want to uh, bring my sister on as a co-host on some of our shows uh with some of these more issues that we're dealing with so we y'all look uh, forward to that soon we got some good chemistry going on so how we doing stephanie doing well doing well thank you for having me i'm glad to be back and to continue the right. conversation so um, right. it's exciting time and, and mothering Absolutely. if you if you hear a little knock on the door and mothering at the same time i understand i understand so we, we're picking back up on the show and you was you, you you shared a lot with us uh with your testimony and what you had going on and i think you, we had got on the last part that we dealt with was just dealing with some of the issues uh we was talking about do we think it's something to do with the black individual or the black lady or the black woman is it more predicated upon them uh and you was you was kind of touching on that on the last part of the show as we was getting ready to end and we can kind of jump back in on that and then let's come back around to stephanie and try to try to close that chapter out of as far as what you're doing uh some of the things that you're destined uh that you're working on now with her natural soul and that type of thing Yes, absolutely. So I, as I recall, um, we've had a lot of life happen within that week. It's the spring break and all those things. But for black women, you know, as I was saying, it's not only black women who suffer with endometriosis and hormonal um, uh, women issues and fertility and things like that. However, it is, um, I would say, a um, 
it's more strongly and prevalent, I think, in Black communities. You know, it may be because I really socialize with a lot of Black women and a lot of our stories are the same. Or they may not know that they're dealing with something and they don't talk about it. You know, as I said before, we don't talk a lot about what we go through and, you know, how we're feeling and the pain we're in. We feel like we're supposed to endure it. You know, I'm I'm right. a woman. This is what I'm supposed to do. You know, Eve, the reason why we're here is because Eve ate the apple, you know, all those things. But we have to come out of those ways of thinking and we have to think about, you know, we are supposed to be whole and well, you know, we're not supposed to be bleeding, you know, three, six months, you know, out of a year continuously. So then I have to hold on one second. Let me get my son. One moment. Right. Okay. <clears throat> That's my nephew, man. It's all good. This is one of the blessings uh, that you know we was talking about. Uh, I think it's I think it's just it's happening for a purpose and for a reason for them to be there today. Uh, to show uh, that one of those blessings that God blessed us with. <laughs> yes, he is. Hey, so they, uh, this happens at work quite a bit as well, so they get to. <laughs> hey. Hey, Grant. <laughs> so he can make his debut. So yeah, as I was saying. Yeah. Okay, listen. Let let mama let mama talk. We gonna we talking through the show. Let mama talk. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> watch me. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Lave. I appreciate you. You know, trying to balance this thing. Okay. That's my family. That's my nephew, man. It's all good. <laughs> he watch it. Okay, he see it. Okay, he saw it. Now you watch it. You watch it. You watch it. Okay. So we want to be sure. Can you cut this out? <laughs> Can this be edited? You good? Watch the show. No, we're not gonna edit. We're gonna keep it just like it is. Okay. <laughs> well, it's thank part, you. It's, it's part of the testimony. It is a part of the testimony, and so. Mm-hmm. Here. Yes. Okay, you're not, sleeping. Okay. Not only not only was you not supposed to have one child. <laughs> right. Two children. So yes. I, mean, I I remember when you and that time, you know, came uh to to Memphis that week and uh y'all had like a little it wasn't a prank. I don't want to call it that it was like a uh I don't know, it was kinda like y'all were trying to show me something. I think it was like in a in a bag or something or something I, like that who knows I, yes i can't and i and i it didn't went over my head and they were like we really have another baby and i was like well, what really? <laughs> so like you know uh it's when i think back on those times you know uh even to uh, your other blessing joanna and then you know grand it's just you know it's a testament of what you what you put your research into uh your prayer life uh you know just to uh you know not just listening to what the doctors had to say so it's 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 big you know showing not just talking about the blessing but showing it right here that you know don't give up because this is the fruit as the bible say the fruit of your labor (laughs) right so the other labor the other labor is walking in now so yeah so Thank you so much uh, for that. And, you know, then let's take that moment, <laughs> a mother moment right there. But right. yeah, it's, it, 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 they are blessings and I'm thankful for it. I remember I found yes, out I was, uh, <laughs> I was uh, pregnant with Joanna. I almost just flipped over. I was like, what, how could this be? I thought it was going to be, you know, a long road ahead, but I had already started prepping myself, you know, moving away from what we call the sad, the standard American diet, right? Moving more mm-hmm. into a plant-based, um, still researching, you know, this is before we had all the impossible work burgers and beyond meat burgers and all these different mock meat, which those are transitional foods and we'll get to that at a point too. But um, really focusing on what does wellness and health look like, you know, and yeah. how do we, how do we do that? Right. And, and what does it look like, you know, and then, you know, I know we come home, like I mentioned earlier, our celebration is around food and we have all the good food, all the barbecue, all the sweets, all this, all that. And then how can I come home, you know, after knowing that's how we celebrate and that's what we do and say, hey, I don't eat meat anymore. You know, I don't do this anymore. 
So I started bringing my own food, you know, and that's what we still do today. Hey, I'm gonna make this meal. And Libby, I know you know, or other, you know, family members know, most of my food gone before the other food gone. They're like, is this plant-based? Is this vegan? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. And, but uh, going back to what we said about women dealing with the issues, I just think it's, it, and I think it's happening more, right? There's a lot more documentaries. There's a lot more, um, you know, research and documents and documentaries. And, you know, you have Tisha, uh, Tia Myrie, you have, um, from the Cosby show. I can't think of her name right now. Um, but you have her, you know, they had eggs over easy. That was a document, uh, a documentary. I think it was on one of the t- cable channels, like right around the holiday time, you know, the talking about women dealing with infertility or going through IVF, which is a process I thought I was going to have to go through or freezing eggs. You know, I talked to my doctor about that and she was like, it's not time yet. And I was like, well, I'm, I'm already in geriatric terms, you know, for having a pregnancy. Anytime you're over 35, then they consider you geriatric and high risk, and especially in black and being black is also a high risk of pregnancy as well. And so right. dealing with all of those things and just the gloom and doom that comes with it. Our medical system is not a wellness system. It's a system for sickness. You know, we don't go to the doctors to say, hey, Let's try this first. Let's try a diet. Let's try, you know, let's do some juicing. Let's do this. Let's do a cleanse first. And then let's see how that works. And, you know, we're not in that system right now for that. They want us to stay sick so we can be dependent upon them and their, you know, pharmaceuticals and the medicine that they give us. But how can we change that? I'm not saying that about every doctor. There are definitely doctors out there now. Um, I have friends personally that have told me we only get, you know, a few hours of nutrition in medical school. It's not our, you know, that's not our concentration. We don't, unless that's the field you're going in, which is some dietary or dietitian or something nutrition based. It's, I don't think it's a semester, right, of nutrition. So she wants to go back and get her credentials for that because she knows that to live a whole well life you know i think she tells me about her her uh grandmother was vegan way you know before this was even a thing and how she lived and how longevity and the, the energy she had and how that now is an inspiration for her some you know 20 years after her death it's coming back full circle of that's the way i need to be eating and living and so these are legacies we live behind leave behind my kids wow. are plant-based, right? And people ask me, what if they go and eat meat? That's fine. <laughs> you know, I I don't, that's not the parent I am. I'm parenting them when they do go out that they can make healthier choices. And Joanna yeah. and I, she's back here, talks <laughs> about, well, that's junk food. I don't think we need to eat that. You're right. <laughs> we don't need to eat that. Um, but we have balance in our house. It's not all salads, you know, veganism or plant-based eating. Or just healthier habits is more than just a salad. There's so much more that comes into that. And that's what I really want to get to this in this second part is giving people tools to actually use. I can talk about my story all day. It's out on the website. It's on Facebook. There's a lot of different places it is. And people can tell their stories. But how do how does a person say, well, that sounds like me. Now, what do I need to do? That's what I would love to share today as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's just only befitting uh, to talk about this as well because I think it's a another part of the uh, puzzle uh, that we don't forget, that we kind of forget to add to it. Uh, the mental piece uh, that you go through uh, with this situation. So um, I think for a while you didn't really share with us that she was actually going to see uh, some uh, doctors as far as your mental uh, aspect of your life, what she was going through, what you had been through leading up to this situation. Uh, you know, with the death of our mom and having children, her, her not being able to see the children. Uh, so it seems as if they're like, even even when in the midst of making the transition, it's like whatever you went through previously is a part of the transition as well. I, yeah. I think I'm kind of kind of kind of saying that correct. So can you can you can you can you like dump that in one little brief second and get to the other part? Uh, yes, absolutely. I can talk about that. So, the you're talking about therapy. Yes, I go to therapy. I have a therapist. I've been going through therapy for many years, and I did not share it with my family because 
Um, we're a very Christian based family. And I think it was taboo at the time to say like, hey, you know, mom and dad, I'm going to therapy. And they'd be like, for what? Like, what's wrong with you? Are you praying? Are you this? I'm doing all of those things. I am doing, you know, the full circle of my spirituality, my wellness, my well-being, you know, my my exercise in my body. I'm doing all the things that I can't forget about my mind. You know, the mind takes you places that you never would conceive that you could go. That's why you always have to bring back good thoughts and speak positive affirmations into yourself. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had to... Um, Prior to um, Lavelle, and you said it, you know, dealing with the loss of our mom and having conversations with her. Also, the pain that I was dealing with made me feel like it's something wrong with me. I was in pain for so long, you know, all day. And I remember sometimes being at work and uh, I would literally bring a, bring a blanket to work in a heat pad and I would just lay on the floor. And, you know, close my door and people would come in or knock on the door and be like, everything's okay. Or one of my good co-workers, uh, we call ourselves twin. She'll she'll text me and say, I'm coming to your office. Come on, let's go. I'm take you to the doctor. And I just be like, I can't move. And so being in that type of debilitating pain, no quality of life, it's a lot. You're like, is this real? Like, am I really in pain? Am I really, you know, uh, hemorrhaging like this? Is this what life is going to be for the duration and you know and I, I had visions of seeing our mom in pain and her kind of bowed up sometime i'm like man i don't want to do that like what is this about and so it takes a toll on your psyche and so yeah i've, I've sought out therapy i've had some horrible therapists <laughs> i've had some um that were okay but didn't quite meet me where i was and then i've come to the place to find a therapist that is right for me for where i am now and the other part of therapy is after I had kids, we don't, of course, live in Memphis, right? I'm from Memphis and I can come home and do all those things. But my village is not in Nashville. My village is in Memphis. And so when you think about when you're dealing with postpartum depression, it is real because I, the village is there for a reason because the mom really needs to rest. And as you know, uh, you have kids, so they're grown now, but I'm sure it's, you can remember those days of this is really no rest. You know, and you're up and I nurse my kids, which is a struggle because I, I dealt with, you know, a um, lack of milk production. And so, you know, trying to give myself some grace and still thrive and whatever that looks like at that point in time. Uh, but Joanna, you know, my husband travels and he, I think he went out on the road the week after I had her. So I had to have a friend come and stay with me that weekend because I wasn't uh, in a positive headspace. Not that I would do anything to her, but I was just lacking everything. I was tired. I was sleepy. I couldn't function. I couldn't, you know, eat. I could barely walk. You know, it was just a lot of things going with it. So I'm thankful for the people I do have here in Nashville, but it's not like, you know, your mom or your dad or your, your sister-in-laws or, you know, your friends, your, your family coming over and just comforting you like we got you, you know? And so I, I struggled with that for a while, but Therapy has been a blessing, <laughs> and uh, I, I, I tell everybody to see if you can find someone who you can actually talk to and meet you where you are and for the phase that you want to be in your life. It's very helpful. Wow. Um, <laughs> I was I was trying to keep it together, and I did. <laughs> uh, I most definitely want to celebrate you, first of all, as a woman uh, that happens to be my sister and just congratulate you on what you have accomplished uh, and try to come from this so i won't get too teary-eyed but uh i love you so much and thank god for what you have produced and what uh you know your family god has blessed you with so we want to get into some of those tools some of those principles that you said you do want to share with these uh beautiful young ladies and everybody that's watching not just women but just men and women in general uh so we want to try to share some of those tools in these last uh eight eight to so minutes that we have left yes absolutely and i love you too Lavelle. you know you keep me going and you keep me accountable so i appreciate you and i'm not gonna get emotional either so for the last five minutes let me see if i can take us through this so i mentioned the standard american diet that is the diet that you know most of us grew up on you know lots of heavy meats heavy carbs you know you may have a serving of vegetables how do we move from that more into a plant-based diet and as i said in the previous video i'm not vegan i don't consider myself to be vegan 
Uh, vegan is a lifestyle of, you know, we don't, there's no leather, right? So I wouldn't go out and buy leather shoes or leather in your car and all those things. So veganism is a much deeper dive into animals, you know, the well-being of animals. I did not yeah. choose this lifestyle, lifestyle to save animals. I get it. But I chose this lifestyle to save myself and to be an example for others after I save myself. Right on the airplane, we just got through from traveling. They walk around and say, put your oxygen mask on first before you right. give it to somebody else. And so that's what I was doing. And when I realized what I did was doing was working, and I was like, oh, this may be, I may be on to something. So what is this something? I always consider my why. And so it's not that I am I necessarily get tempted from food, but I still have senses. I'm like, ooh, that chicken smell good, right? Like, oh, that sausage smell good. How can I prepare that at home or, you know, rework it to make it more of a, not necessarily even healthy because all vegan foods are not healthy, but something that I would feel more comfortable eating versus eating, you know, I had to tell my daughter that, um, <laughs> that pork is from a pig. Some people don't correlate the animal with the pig. <coughs> or a hamburger is a cow. She's like, that's not a cow, it's a hamburger. Well, it comes from a cow, <laughs> right? So when oh, you start yeah. thinking of it like that, uh, it starts to put things into perspective of why we don't eat actual eggs. I won't get into that because I don't want to ruin anybody's time with eating eggs. You enjoy your eggs and that's fine with me. But I always know your why. Are you doing this for healing? Like I mentioned on the previous one about self-discovery is this for healing is this just for the moment which that's fine too is this for um just to see if you can do it is it like a fasting situation for you what is your goal around the why because the difficult part is when you do go to those family reunions or those family celebrations or to a, a picnic in the park with your friends and the grill is going what's going to keep you sustained i always yeah. say have you some snacks with you Come to the grill, come to the, the cookout with your own foods, fruits and vegetables. You know, I asked my daddy to keep one side of the grill clean for me, which he does. And we put some foil down and I'm making, you know, be, um, field roast burgers or I'm grilling some pineapples or I'm making some type of um, Italian vegan sausage. And I'm adding that with some some rice and some or some brown rice or some quinoa and adding in some kale and just making this nice casserole. There's so many things you can do to not feel left out or necessarily not feel tempted. So always consider your why. Why am I doing this? And then to be prepared is number two. How do I be prepared? As I said, come in with your food, come in with your snacks. Don't go hungry, right? Mm. Um, I used to look at menus quite a bit before I would go out anywhere. I would study a menu. What can I do? What can I get? How can I substitute this out? How can I bring this in? Mm -hmm. And I will say occasionally I will eat fish. Um, maybe about, you know, four to five times out of the year. It's not necessarily something I didn't choose to necessarily stop eating fish. We were going into a deeper alkaline eating regimen, which that's when I felt the most um, well and healthy and vibrant and vitality. But it's a lot of work to keep up the alkaline diet, especially with little ones. And so um, as I was doing it, though, I phased out the fish. But I'm not against fish, but there are documentaries out on why you shouldn't eat fish and how you can get those omega-3s and other those, those other fatty acids from other uh, plant uh, sea vegetables and things of that nature that's not necessarily from fish. And so also educate yourself. Don't just listen to me or just anybody and just say, just go do what they're doing. Everybody works body is different, right? Everybody's uh, metabolism is different. And I don't consider weight as the achievement for you um, changing your lifestyle. A weight, your weight loss, usually it is, um, is a derivative of your body cleansing itself. And so there's an acronym around in the plant-based world that's ABC, always be cleansing. And what does that mean? It means to sweat. That means to have adequate bowel movements throughout the day. That means to have massages. You can do like lymphatic massages with brushes, dry brushing. Um, that means to do something like yoga that releases the lymphatic system or some type of stretching to get the body to move in and to get those fluids moving throughout the body. But when they say always been clean, cleansing, it's not necessarily like, oh, I just have to 
you know, juice and, you know, all this stuff. It's like, no, do the things that your body is releasing toxins on a consistent basis. We live in an atmosphere and an environment with pollution and all those things. There's so much in the air. You can't get, you know, um, away from it. So, but how can you support your body and actually releasing those toxins? So those right. are some of the sources I would like to, you know, be sure that you pay attention to, that you know your why, be prepared, always be cleansing, and then just be happy in the moment. You know, gratitude, right. love on yourself. You know, as you're eating those fruits and vegetables, telling yourself like, hey, this is for me. This is for the vitality of life. This is for longevity. This is for the future. You know, you're in, you, you're speaking to this food. When we talk about eating animals, and there's a lot of people that you'll hear talk about this if you research plant-based or veganism that um, the animal meat that we eat, that animal has been tortured. And you're taking on that um, that life cycle of sadness and death that that animal has been through. And you're putting it in your body. But when you're eating living and whole and well foods, you're putting life back into yourself. So you impart that in yourself. You just don't say, oh, I'm just going to eat this kale because I eat this way. No, I mean, this has this kale because it's going to make me feel better. It's going to make me have more energy. It's going to give me the chlorophyll that I need. It's going to give me the iron that I need. It's going to give me all the nutrition that I need. And once we start putting that into our minds and not saying like, oh, I got to eat this because I'm that. No, make it a, a beautiful experience. You know, food is good. It is well. We need it. But how can we eat for life and not for death? Wow, man, <laughs> you helping me? I have to say, uh, eat life. That may be another whole another part of your uh, whole natural soul. You need to start come up with some kind of acronym for life. Eat life. Yeah. That was for free. Uh, we're coming down to the end, and uh, most definitely, this has been a great segment. These last two interviews. Uh, I just want you to be able to share now. Uh, uh, what's the future like for her natural soul, Stephanie Nesbitt? Uh, what are some of the things that you're going to be doing there in the Nazareth area and possibly in the Memphis area, maybe podcasts? Uh, what are some of the things you're going to be doing and how can everybody find you? Yeah, so one of the things I want to add on or that I have added is I'm a certified yoga instructor because yoga also helped me in my healing. Um, mm -hmm. I actually was doing Bikram yoga, which is hot yoga, hot 26. People hear their words. It's a very hot room. But I was serious about that I always be cleansing. So I knew when I went to a hot yoga class that I was actually purging toxins out of my body. So um, I want to get back into actually offering yoga classes. I took a break just to balance life with the kids and uh, pandemic and all those things. But that is my goal to get started back in that. Also, I want to provide more resources for people. And be, you know, all the resources I think I mentioned about the alkaline diet and what does that mean, or being plant based, a flexitarian, a vegetarian. These may be words that I know, but I can't assume everybody knows them. And so, yeah. how can I help educate those who want to make lifestyle changes and be mm -hmm. sure that this is a change that they can stick to and to give themselves grace if they go out and have a chicken wing on the weekend? Like, that's okay. That's not what I'm here. I'm not here to judge you. So I do want to be an extension of resource for people, but also to uh, let them know that they can self-guide their research and actually take the time and, and put the work in. That's good. <laughs> well, wow. Um, all of our information is down at the end of the screen down here on the ticker there. Uh, this has been a great segment. And again, I'm going to be having her back on because I do want to get more to the yoga part of it and uh, maybe actually bring on some of the individuals that you have uh, you know life you have impacted you know to talk about some some things uh and get a little bit more into it so um uh, i don't even want to bring this to an end and so uh we we're we're thankful again for this segment with real life and one love and uh there's anything else you want to say in closing as we get ready to stop uh the show I'm just thankful to be here and be a resource. It's a lot of information to kind of pack into 30 minutes, but hopefully I provided something that was impactful and resourceful and um, to give you some light, but there's some light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, if any way I can support someone, all of my information is down below here somewhere. Uh, feel free to reach out. I'm here. Well, guys, this is my own personal tab with the brown I have right here. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, just kind of throw that in there. Maybe a tablet or watch the show. Yeah, baby. 
But uh, yeah, it's been real life with one love again. We want to thank you all for watching. And again, we're here every Wednesday at 5 30 p.m. on Comcast 17. It'll also be on my YouTube channel and on my Facebook fan page. Thank you for watching. This is It's Real Life with One Love. Thank you for watching.